When they first met last March, uh, President Trump refused to shake Angela Merkel's hand. Now, relations between President and Bundeschancellor appear to be warming. They've been speaking on the phone today, and both sides said they wanted a cooperative relationship. The White House says the pair discussed joining forces to counter China's unfair trade practices, including the stealing of intellectual property. On tariffs, they talked about levelling the playing field. Germany says Mrs Merkel called for dialogue and wants new trade rules. They also discussed North Korea and Russia. So, Karl Theodor Zugutenberg's former economy minister of Germany and defence minister joins me now. Good to see you, sir. Lovely to see you. Is there really common ground between Germany and the US on this? Isn't it bizarre that we have to talk about this after so many years of cooperation and, and actually friendship, and it's now about a cooperative relationship? So there is some common grounds when it comes to China. This is what I think. We have shared interests here. And if this administration starts to understand that it is worthwhile to align forces and to be more efficient, if you work together with Germany or the European Union on China, that's already a step forward. I'm still very cautious on believing how, that. How, how can they all work together <laughs> when, in the one breath, and we'll come to Rod Hunter, who, who's in London, to join in this discussion in just a second, if we have him back. How can, how can um, you have common cause when you threatened the Germans only right. two weeks previously and this on is, steel and aluminium. And that, Richard, is exactly why I still, I still have my serious doubt that this president overnight more or less got rid of his zero-sum mentality he has shown for so many weeks and months. On the other hand, he is obviously approaching some kind of a deadlock here. It's, uh, he's not coming further with what he has promised to his electorate, and he needs partners. And he might have understood, he might have understood to a certain extent that the Chinese only win if they separate and if they diverge the so-called Western unity. Right. And they've exactly done so already. Right, but Rod Hunter in London, the question I asked you was, how can you have an agreement with China when at the same time you do require China to continue funding your, your ever-growing deficit through, buying, through the purchase of bonds? Well, the United States is China's biggest c customer. And so China has um, an interest in finding a solution that works. And though cooperating with the Europeans, of course, would be very important to seeing, seeing that happen, is in fact is a consequence of these uh, steel and aluminum tariffs. Uh, uh, the, the reality, though, the reality is, I, I'm pausing just to, to sort of to, to collect my thoughts. <laughs> in the space of three months, we've gone from tariffs on steel and aluminium tariffs on intellectual property. We've got the WTO almost on its last legs. Yeah. We've got NAFTA breathing its last over a renegotiation. The TPP has been refashioned. Right, TTIP is buried. TTIP, well, I, I, I forgot about that, that never got out the gate. The reality is though, what does Germany want from this administration? Well, I think it was a quite clever approach by the Chancellor after six months of being entirely silent, trying to form a coalition in Germany to step up, somehow weaken, but a step up, reach out now to President Trump and telling him the following thing. You need to work with us, otherwise you won't achieve what you would like to achieve with China. First point. Second point, it is an entry gate for us, Germany, to renegotiate with you what we would like to see on the horizon on trade issues coming together with Europe. So she might even push him into some kind of renegotiating TTIP approach. And I think, well, it's, yeah, of course, I would do the same phase as if I would be from the UK. Right, all right. <laughs> In that regard. But I think that's mm. behind the whole thing. All right, but Rod, but... Rod, is there strategy behind yeah. this? Or is this, as the New York Times... I, 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 as you see, I, I, as you see, is there strategy behind any of this? Or is this just making it up as they go along? We'll put it to you, Carl. Well, it's... I, 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 re I rarely see anything that comes close to a strategy coming from the White House. It's uh, the only strategy is more or less tweeted every single morning and then retweeted maybe at this or that point. From a German perspective, I do see a strategy. The strategy is not to slide entirely into a trade war scenario, but actually to keep talking to someone, to someone who still somehow listens at least to the German chancellor. But how damaged, not damaged, one word, weakened is the Chancellor. She's got her fourth term, but it is her last term, to all intents and purposes. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're, you're smiling. It is her last term. 
And Everything else would be a surprise, yeah. And she is... She's not in full command. Well, it's... Uh, she she would at least pretend to be in full command, and I see her in command of a, another grand coalition. I'm struggling with the term grand, of course, in this context. But she is one of the few in Europe who still has some leverage around the globe. Don't forget that. And there are still some Americans who believe she's the last woman standing in this regard. Right. Is she damaged after last year, to a certain extent? Yes. Good to have you on this side, sir. Come Great back to again. See you. Thank you very much indeed.